We have a, billion, a vision for the billion dollar enterprise that can successfully lay claim to this opportunity. An enterprise that has a broad product and service portfolio spanning engineering services, hardware tooling and prototyping, program management, supplier management, plant engineering, research. A composition of work that is much more evolved towards the high end and away from where it is today, which is lower valued engineering. And an operating footprint that has capability to in be intimate with customers, not only in India, but in North America, in Europe, and in Japan. Today, there are lots of categories of competitors in this Indian infrastructure. There are offshoots of the originating IT outsourcing companies. There are pure engineering captives. There are independent engineering startups. There are transplants to India of developed country engineering services providers to tap into the cost base. There are upstream offshoots of existing indigenous manufacturing companies. There are joint ventures. And there's engineering and mechanical captives components of, of uh, established uh, developed country players. The category in our mind doesn't matter. Uh, where you start is anywhere. Because, in fact, all these companies will have to grow dramatically to take advantage of the opportunities before us. This market is in its infancy. So we see all of these individual models evolving as the market grows, evolving in service and product portfolio, footprint, capabilities, business model, customer base, alliances, infrastructure. And we see that evolution being required both for the independents, the commercial ones, and for the internal market ones. Internal markets will need the scale to provide services equal to the independents, and so there is a real challenge. What may work for GE may not work for GM. The other thing this slide tries to show is that notwithstanding all the paths, there's one common theme. The path to growth will require more and more integration with your customer and less and less of a transactional basis for the relationship. The starting point then for these winners is the ability to grow their portfolio of services. From product line management and manufacturing support, through design support, through design and design validation, through manufacturing support, through engineering applications, to manufacturing process capabilities. <coughs> As this happens, we expect the first thing to be the result, that is a broader portfolio of product and services spanning not only engineering but hardware prototypes, tooling, a broader extension of the Indian value proposition. The second characteristic is that we believe these winners will have C-suite based relationships enable them to, be to enable them to form alliances as strategic partners with their dedicated clients. Clients will be plural, there will be more than one, but the partnerships will comprehend the kind of intimacy it takes to expand the penetration of the full value proposition into the market and into the target customers. The winners will focus on strengthening these relationships. They will focus on building the relationship as a strategic partner with their customer, not on becoming transactional suppliers of individual project-based services. And as a result, whereas today we see the market overwhelmingly transactional, in the future we see the market as overwhelmingly dedicated in the client-partner relationship. Engineering is different from some other services. It is more intimate, it is more creative. Making something from nothing takes the kind of intimacy with your customer that is different from an IT service provider. It's one of the reasons engineering won't happen as fast as you might want, but will happen still in a way you're, when you look back on it, at a very high rate of explosion. These dedicated partnerships will lead to larger customer relationships. We're sort of projecting an eight-fold increase in the size of the average customer to the winning player. The dedicated relationships with customers will lead to higher value-added engineering. On the left-hand side today, we see the Indian provider market as dominating, dominated by low-end engineering. But in the future, we see that as a balanced portfolio that reflects the client's mix of business. We don't see any reason for the Indian offshore service providers to be locked out of the higher-end engineering 
In fact, in some ways, we see pieces of that capacity being developed to become the best of the world. We also see the spread between the winners and the average broadening. If you look on the open bars on the left-hand side, today you've got about a four to one spread between the top quartile and the average. In the future, we see that spread as growing. Today, we see in terms of FTEs, a spread from four to six to 1,600 to 1,800. In the future, we see these very big enterprises for the top quartile. Many people are already there. Consistent with the ability to be intimate with customers, the Indians will, engineering offshore companies will have a global footprint. Today, that footprint is overwhelmingly India-centric. Tomorrow, we see it as, in fact, overwhelmingly other-centric. This is the beginning of an enormously challenging era, fraught with huge opportunity. India has already built much of the capability to address that opportunity. Many of you are here today because of that. Uh, all we can say is those general principles provide some overall guidance of where the winners will go. But the race is always to the swift and to the smart. I wish you all good luck. Thank you.